Here at Studio for Art, and we're going to do another little to-go packet. Today we're going to talk about um, acrylic painting and specifically go into some color mixing, which is super fun. Uh, so in here is my acrylic painting kit. I have, what do I have? I have a sticker. I have some paint. This is the acrylic paint. So I have blue, yellow, red, and white. I have this little cup, which is um, just for water. I have a couple of little paint brushes. And I have this piece of paper. This is to cover my table so that I don't accidentally get any acrylic paint on whatever surface I'm working on. So I can unfold this, make sure my space is ready to work on. Something to keep in mind, acrylic paint is uh, it's kind of a plastic-based paint. Um, so once it dries, it's great because it doesn't wash off of your canvas, but that also means that it doesn't wash out of your clothes. Um, so it doesn't, doesn't wash out. So I would wear maybe some art clothes, something that you don't mind getting dirty. Um, if you want to work outside, that's always a great space to work. Uh, otherwise, just make sure that you have your space covered. Um, I also have a canvas. This is a stretched canvas. That means that the fabric is pulled over this wood frame. And I have a piece of tin foil. And the tin foil is my palette, so it's what I get to use to mix colors on. Okay, so I'm going to set up. Right now I'm just going to talk about color mixing, so I'm not going to paint on the palette. I'm just going to do some experiments. So I have my red, my yellow, my blue, my white. The reason that I have these four colors is because red, yellow, and blue, they're called the primary colors. And what that means is I can use them to make just about any other color I want, and uh, nothing else can make these colors. So I can't make blue by mixing two colors of paint. I can't make yellow by mixing two colors of paint. I can't make red by mixing two colors. Uh, so I use these, but I can use them to make all sorts of other things. White is a really good color for making things lighter. So it's, uh, it's considered a, a tint. All right, I'm gonna take all these goodies. And now I'm gonna go get some water in my little water cup. Just got my water cup. I also grabbed a little rag because I like to use something to dry my brush off after I rinse it. So you can use a rag or a towel, um, something to kind of soak up some of the extra water. So, let's talk about color mixing. Uh, so on this circle here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint, it's called a color wheel. Uh, so you might have seen it, it's the wheel that has the rainbow in it. Uh, this is a good way of figuring out what colors make other colors, as well as what colors are opposites or complementary to each other. Uh, so in here, I'm gonna divide it into six sections for today. So I'm gonna draw a line in the middle. And now, I have my circle divided. On the top half, I'm going to make a V. And I'm trying to get somewhere close to the middle. On the other side, I'm going to have the same shape going like that. So I'm going to go up until it touches that middle part, and then back down. So now I have six pieces, because dividing it into six is kind of hard to do. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now that I have that, I'm going to start with red. Um, so I'm going to take my paintbrush and dip it in the red. Um, I always like to think of the size of my brush. So since I'm painting on a really big thing, I'm using a bigger brush. But if I were painting on a small circle, I would use a smaller paintbrush because that would work really well. I'd have an easier time. So I'm going to use this brush. I'm going to paint one of these triangles or little slices red. When I'm painting something in, what I like to do is paint the border, so paint the, the outer line of it, and then I can paint inside. And when I paint, what really helps is I'm always going to pull with my brush. Um, what that means is I have uh, my brush here, the brush handle is this way, and I'm going to pull. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to pull down. When I go the other way, I'm going to have my brush, I'm going to flip it the other direction, and then I can go up. So I'm back and forth. 
Um, but I'm always pulling. I'm not scrubbing with my brush. I'm not... So this is pushing. If I go this way, it's pushing. And what happens is when I push the brush is the hairs kind of go out. They don't stay together. Alright, I have a red pizza slice. I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to have it dance around in the water. I'm trying to get all the pigment out. I'm gonna, I like to brush it off on the edge. When I do this, I do it kind of slow, because sometimes if I go really fast, I splatter the water and I might get it on somebody else's work, or I might get it on my own painting. So I'm going to go a little slow. I'm going to dry it, because with this kind of paint, uh, when you put water in it, it dilutes it, it makes it thinner and it can get more transparent, so more see-through, or it'll get runny. Uh, so I'm, for what I'm doing right now, I want it to be opaque. I want it to be solid and more vibrant. All right, so I'm my red. I am going to skip one slice, and now I'm gonna paint in another slice using one of my primary colors. I'm gonna use yellow. So I'm in yellow. I'm gonna paint this slice in now. yellow slice. I'm gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna dry my brush. And now I'm gonna get some blue. And my water changed colors. And same thing, I'm gonna skip this slice. I'm gonna do blue in the next one. Alright, so now it looks kinda like a beach ball. Uh, the reason that I did that though is because in between each of the spaces, so the areas that are still white, I'm going to mix the colors that are next to it. So in this space, I'm going to mix red and yellow and see what happens. Um, I can either mix it on the paper, or I can take a little bit um, of my color and mix it on the tin foil. So I'm going to take it. When you mix paint, it helps to start with a color that is lighter. So between red and yellow, yellow is a little bit lighter. It's not as um, intense. So I'm going to take a scoop of yellow. I'm going to put it on my tin foil. I'm going to rinse it. And now, when I mix the red, I want to add just a little bit at a time. I'm going to see if it changes it. So I'm going to add a little bit of red. I'm going to mix that up. Oh, it totally worked. Let's see what color it is. So I have my red-yellow mixture. I'm going to paint it on this square, this slice, because it's between the red and the yellow. It made orange! So now we know red and yellow, when mixed together, make orange. Alright, so I have my red, and I have orange, and I have yellow. So these two make orange, and that's why orange is there in the order of the rainbow. The next one, right here. I'm going to mix blue and yellow. The cool thing about color mixing is depending on how much of each color you have, you can make all sorts of different colors. So by mixing red and yellow, depending on how much yellow I use or how much red I use, I can make more of a red-orange, so uh, something a little bit deeper, a little bit warmer, or I can make something like a yellow-orange, and that's going to be brighter because it has more yellow. So red colors are warmer, yellow colors are called brighter, um, so now, let's mix yellow and blue and see what happens. So again, I'm going to start with my yellow, take a scoop, rinse my brush. I like to rinse my brush between colors because it keeps all of these colors clean. So my original colors stay clean, and what that means is I can use them longer and I can make more colors. Because if I dip a dirty brush into my color, I won't be able to use it anymore. It'll change the color, so it won't be the same. Alright, take a little bit of blue. Stir it together. Let's see what it makes. Look at this. We made green. So I have my green. I'm going to paint it between the blue and the yellow because I use blue and yellow to mix these and make green. And again, if I used more blue, my green would be a little bit darker and cooler. If I used more yellow, my green is going to be brighter. So I can get all sorts of different kinds of green with the same two colors. Alright, the last spot, we have the red and the blue. So I'm going to take my red, rinse my brush.
take my blue, stir it together. my red and my blue together, and what it did is it made kind of a really deep violet color. Uh, it's not going to be the same color as a purple crayon that you might be used to, um, and that's because this red in particular is so hot. So one thing I could do is if I use something that's closer to a magenta, uh, when I mix it with my blue it makes more of a traditional purple that you might be thinking of. Um, this one is going to be more of a, like a deep violet color. I have my color wheel now. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So that's part of why it's in that order is because of how the colors mix together. Uh, and now we can talk about a couple of things. So there's something called complementary colors and what that means when you're painting is uh, or drawing or using, using color. Complementary colors mean that they are opposites. So a complementary color to red is going to be, I'm gonna go right across, Green. So those two are complementary colors, and what that means is when they're next to each other, they look really bright together. They kind of bounce off of each other. The other thing is when I'm trying to mix something like brown, um, when I mix two complementary colors together, I can make brown. Uh, so it takes all three colors, red, yellow, and blue, to make brown when I mix them. Again, depending on the, the amounts that I mix them in, I can make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of colors, which is so fun. Uh, this helps me figure out kind of how to, how to do it or what to pair together. If I wanted to make um, my green a little bit warmer, I might need some red. If I wanted to make my orange a little bit cooler and um, closer to, to kind of like a rusty orange color, I could add a little tiny bit of blue and see how that changed it. So I can mix these colors in different combinations to make all sorts of things. Uh, so you also have a can you mix 100 colors sheet. And what I get to do in this is mix all sorts of fun colors. So I can see what happens if I mix red. I'm gonna put a little bit of red. Rinse my brush. Dry my brush. Get some white. Let's see what happens when I mix red and white together. You might already know. I made pink, so red and white make pink. Pink is actually another name for light red, because uh, when you mix white in, it makes the color lighter. So I have colors that are bright. Yellow is a bright color. Colors that are warm, red. Red is a warm color, and I have colors that are cool. Blue is a cool color. Uh, and white makes things lighter. So I can use all these different things in combination, and I, I, can, I can see if I can make all of these different colors. If I run out of space, I can start mixing colors in between because I could make even more colors. I could use another sheet of paper and make even more colors. Uh, when I'm doing it on this sheet, since this sheet has much smaller circles, I'm gonna use my small brush and use the small brush so that I can keep them together. And that way, I'll have more space to mix more colors because my brush won't be taking over the space. Let's also try mixing all three to see what happens. I'm going to take a little bit of red. A little scoop of yellow. I'm going to mix a teeny dot of blue. Not a lot, just a little bit. Because blue is a stronger color. It's going to take over fast. So I'm going to do a little tiny bit of blue. So I have uh, flamingo pink, ochre brown. If you mix a color that's new, you get to name it, which is really fun. You can make up crazy, silly names or make up fun names. So now that you know how to mix some colors, you can mix hundreds and hundreds of colors. You can see how many fun colors you can make. And then, if you really can, 
See if you can remember how to make your color so you can use it again later. And that takes some practice. See how many different colors you can make. So using just the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, you can make so many different colors. By adding white, you can make so many different hues of the same color. Uh, and you can really play, you can experiment, you can try new things. We have our primaries, red, yellow, and blue. And then we have our secondaries, which is the colors that those make, orange, green, and purple, or violet. And then you can get into all sorts of other things like tertiary colors, which is like red orange and yellow orange and yellow green and blue green and red violet and blue violet. Those are all fun colors. You can start thinking of your own colors of turquoise and chartreuse and lemon and uh, just thinking of all sorts of foods now. Uh, so thank you so much. Happy color mixing. Check out studioforart.net for other tutorials and to-go packets. There's more coming up your way. Again, thank you so much. Have a great day.